it's really hard because it's not that easy and we don't get paid until you get your keys so i can be you can be my customer for six months i'm not going to get paid that whole six months right <laughs> Welcome, welcome, you and all, to another episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast, where we talk about, say it with me, Latino everything. You know the motto. Thank you very much for being here. Make sure you go and subscribe to the channel. You already know that it does help us a lot, a lot. And, like, if I say a lot often, it's because it really means a lot whenever you subscribe to our channel and support. Thank you very much for being here. Today, we have an amazing episode because we have a bilingual DFW Dallas Forward area realtor with DFW Urban Realty and Realty Realty mm -hmm. and Airbnb super host. Can you believe she made her first deal at 10 years old and she did not even know what she did? <laughs> yeah, she has been published on multiple magazines as well. We have Kristen Contreras and La Casa. Hi, how Hi. you doing? Hi, what's up everybody? Hello, thank you very much Hi. for being here. I appreciate your time. Yes, I thank you so you much for having me. Absolutely. I know you stay busy. You have different businesses that you're doing, especially being a realtor. You're always out and about. So thank you for the time. No, thank you so much for having me here. I'm excited. And we're going to start with a segment that some of you already know, Preguntas al Chile. If you don't preguntas know about Preguntas al Chile, Chile, now is the time to go check out the graphics. Carlos put together producer, videographer, drum operator, and all that. He's been shy about doing anything with me, but one of these days we'll get him. Lista? Yep, Are I'm ready. ready. Yes, it's like lista. Tacos or tortas? Tacos. Oh, that's easy, tacos. I corn love tacos. tortilla or flour tortilla? Well, when I'm on a diet, I'll do corn, uh -huh. <laughs> but regularly it's flour. Okay, gorditas or sopas? Oh, gorditas. I love rajas con queso. Gorditas rajas con yes, queso. Yes, that's my favorite. Or frijoles con queso. Mm. Me too. Yeah, mm. they're good. Sounds yummy. Mexican coca or jarrito? Jarritos. What, so I love jarritos. Um, ooh. I like the piña and the lime. Piña and mm -hmm. lime. A piña with a torta. That's good. Oh, with the yeah. tortas. You have, like, these questions are so hard. I know, right? Can I choose both or has to be one or the other? I mean, we will prefer the love for one more than the other, but I can see okay. sometimes it's kind of hard to pick one. It is. So it depends on what I'm feeling. Wanna, if you want to call it Thai, we'll go with a Thai. Okay. Okay. Ha agua de horchata, jamaica, tamarindo. Aguas frescas. Okay, I like horchata and jamaica. Yeah, it's like, like both. Uh -huh. Jamaica is and tamarindo for me. Yeah. I like Menudo or pozole? Pozole. And my mom makes the best pozole verde. Really? Yeah. Why, Have you had verde? Okay, so what is, what is the... I don't doubt that your mom's pozole is the best. What makes it so unique or so good? It's just the flavor is like perfect. Perfect amount of salt, perfect amount of chile. Everything's good, you know? It doesn't ever lack anything. She makes it with love. That's yeah, she makes sorts. it with love. A little bit of sauce, you know? And then... Um, Let me guess. Your mom's one of the ones that just... Yeah, I'm like, mom, what's the recipe? I don't know. You got to watch me because I just throw stuff in there. You know, that's how my, sure. my abuelita is, too. So I just have to watch them. Sure. I record my yeah. grandma making tortillas because really? she doesn't know. She's like, Tomas lo tanteo así. Lo <laughs> and I'm like, tanteo. lo tanteo. I'm like, OK, well. That's crazy because they do be tapping into their ancestors. It's just like they just know the right amount. <laughs> yeah. And like you said, every time, years, pozole, still delicious. It's and good. it's just like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's no actual recipe, you know? That's like, crazy. how many cups or teaspoons? <laughs> Un tablespoon de queso. No. Okay, continuamos. Churros o flan? Oh, flan. flan. I love choco flan. Choco flan. Choco flan, choco flan is my Ooh. favorite. Yeah, that's a different Yeah, and my tia makes the best flan. Your tia makes the best mm -hmm. flan. You have, like, enough to start a restaurant. You gotta try restaurant. it. I'm gonna, you know what? She wants to start a restaurant, and I'm really? telling her to do it. Yeah. yeah. Next time she I comes, know. I'm gonna I'm gonna save you a slice. Yeah. Well, we have to remember a vegan don't really eat them on it, but I'm pretty sure well, she then. makes a variation of it. I'm pretty sure I can have it. All right, I got you. I got you. You got me. No I dairy. Mean. Okay. Yeah. Okay, continuamos. Valentina, Tapatio, Cholula, or Tabasco sauce? Valentina. Valentina, yeah. yeah Conchitas, the pastries, the brown ones, the pink ones, or the white ones? Pink. Pink ones. Okay, so this was a different one, totally off the wall, just because okay. Carlos and I like a good conspiracy. 
a conspiracy theory that when you heard it, it was like, oh, that has to be true. <laughs> okay. Um, I think aliens are real. Okay. So the government I do just believe in believe. aliens. Yeah. Or I feel like we might be the aliens and the other people are actually normal. You know? I never thought about that. Like it's flipped. That's possible. What if we're aliens to them and they're normal? You know they what already I mean? have some kind of a label or identity for us that we call them aliens, but yeah. they already have a particular name for us. It's because the universe is so big, True. right? If it's really how they say it is. So I just feel like there's another planet with with um that we can survive on with have life ever, have you ever pondered just on how big the universe whenever they say is infinite and you grasp that thought that it's infinite and it just keeps going and you just can't really like comprehend yeah that that big. it's like where does it end it's huge but it never ends right it keeps going and growing and so we're like tiny like a little atom you know what i mean it's crazy if, if that doesn't humble you in your entire life but thinking that no, it's cool to feel good about oneself, but whenever you see that part that you're we're like little bitty compared to everything there is, you're yeah, like, wow, it's crazy. It'll be humble. Okay, For so sure. whenever you hear the word Latino, Latina, Latinx, what first comes to mind to you? I think of family, food, and hardworking. Those three things, because the families are big. You know, my grandma had eleven kids. And every Mexican family or Latinos, like, I just feel like they're big and they they have each other's backs, you know? Yeah. And My then the food is amazing. Ten? ten? ten kids oh, wow. Look at that. Big. big family. I love big families. And then, you know, we grew up like that. And you were telling me about the food also? Yeah, food. Yeah, food. Have, uh, I was food. I was looking at something and it said... Um, they did like a little poll and everyone was asked what's your favorite food what's your favorite everybody said mexican food you know salvadorian food mexican food like everybody loves our culture's food and so the food is big when you know you're going to go to a latino party you know there's going to be a lot of food or you're going to be fed or your abuelita wants to feed you my my grandma will feed everybody you know on her block one of the things that makes me think whenever if anybody was to ask me it's inviting too how much we're welcome how how welcoming we are Mm -hmm. we're willing to to feed you without you're automatically it's family. Stranger. Like, sit down. We're gonna feed you good. And, yeah. You know, we're gonna be asking questions. Make That's you true. You're welcome. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. And do you mind? Do you care if anybody calls you Latina? Do you care for the term? Are you rather be Mexican American or Mexican? Which one, Which one do you prefer for you? Do you care? Do you get offended? No, I love it. Mm-hmm. You know, like I love being called Mexican, Latina. Um, I, w- I wasn't born in Mexico, but I wish I was, yeah. you know? So I can say, like, I'm actually from Mexico, uh, but my dad is. So my mom's not. My mom's from here. But um, I love it. Yeah, it doesn't offend me. Speaking of, let's get into the interview part. I love to ask this question because I like, like to see the backgrounds of different people, where they mm-hmm. came from, and especially their parents and different things. Like that. So your dad was from Mexico. Mm-hmm. Uh, is from Mexico. What part do you know his journey to the States? He is from Torreon, Coahuila. Coahuila. Coahuila, yeah. So my dad loves to dance. That's where I got my moves from. Um, so you love to dance. I love dancing. Nice. Anything, you know. The only thing I need help on is country dancing. <laughs> but other than that, I love cumbias, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, but my dad, I believe he got here when he was like 19. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did he ever tell you what, how he was, his journey, as far as why he decided to come here? And what route did he take? Was it the legal way? Was it illegal? Or, you know, different things like that. I mean, it wasn't the legal way, but, you know, I don't know the main story on, like, how he actually got here. Um, I don't really talk to my dad that much. Okay. Yeah. And what about your mom? My mom. she was born in Kansas. Yeah, she was born in Kansas. Nice. Small town. Like, tiny. Tiny, tiny. There's one Walmart. One McDonald's, one They're high big. school. If you, if you have a Walmart in your town, you already make it a big. Yeah? yeah. Okay, Walmart is big. You're it right. Is. You're right. But if there's just one Burger King and one high school, I don't know. It's kind of small. Walmart everybody knows right. everybody. <laughs> yeah. Walmart makes it. Okay. So she was born there. Yeah. She and was do born you in know Kansas. her her history as far as her family ancestry? Like she's always been there. She's Mexicana too. Or mm-hmm. where does... Yeah, because my grandparents were from are from Mexico. Mm-hmm. And so they came here, I don't know what year, you know, but my grandma like crossed the the Rio with, she was pregnant and had my little tío Cynthia's with her. Really? And they were like three, four by herself because my grandpa came over here to work. Wow. 
and so my grandma crossed to come over here to to be with my grandpa and um they got here my mom wasn't even she wasn't born yet when mm -hmm. my grandma got here and then they they migrated to kansas what because my kansas? i had some family my abuelito had a primo here in kansas mm -hmm. so they went to kansas because they had some family it's always like that right but it's interesting to know that they had to take a leap faith that they didn't work out i don't know what part of what part of mexico where they're from uh Your guanajuato, guanajuato. las momias yeah. yeah so it's crazy that they decided at a young age to take off and then you always have like families they're welcoming mm -hmm. to, to show them around and you know start making a, their way and yeah especially being pregnant and having to cross the border yeah i don't know how my grandma is strong like she was like almost due you know, like with my close. tia, and she came and had all the little kids with her, and they were crossing together. That's she crazy. had three, two of my tias and one tío, and she was pregnant, and they came. And they crossed. And they crossed Did all together. Did you ever ask her if, how was that particular journey? Because I know my mom. She was scared. She said they almost drowned. In the, in the Rio? Yeah. Wow. I know. And then how did, it, did she make it out of it to where she, she didn't drown? Yeah, no, she got it. Because I think they, they weren't on a boat, but they were like on a little... Wood thing or yeah. something, you know. I don't know exactly how it looked, but yeah. they were like standing on it. Uh -huh. And then when they came, yeah, she said it, that it flipped and they almost drowned, but she made it with all the kids across. And then you know, they met whoever they were meeting, helping them come. That's amazing. That's the reason why I like these typical questions because it's so cool to learn about the way and the the struggles, yeah, the dangers, and the persistence to get here, even as pregnant with kids be able to go chase the American dream, having your grandfather here to make a better life for themselves. You know, yeah. those challenges are really something that our families, especially like myself too, have to go through to get here. And then leave us a place now that is better than they had to go through, you know? Yeah, that's brave. Cause I'm it like, is. dang, Ita, like, I don't know if I could do that now, you know? Like you're risking your whole life yeah. with your kids and you're crossing this big river like, to come through. to a different country, yeah. So that's, that's awesome. how my, yeah. So let's start about your journey. So you were born in Kansas. Yeah. You made your way here and in 2005. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what brought you to the Dallas Forward area? Was it a family thing? Did you have uh, something that drove you over here? So, um, yeah. So I was 10 years old, right? Oh, and a baby. I was little. Yeah. I was in <laughs> fifth grade, starting fifth grade. So we were in Kansas, Garden City, Kansas, and there was just a lot of crime. Right. And like our houses get, kept getting broken into. They stole my mom's car. Everything was stole just going bad. Yeah. They stole my mom's car and they found it a couple of days later, like in a different city. And they were just yeah. stealing like they stole my Barbies, my clothes. Are you serious? Yeah. That my bad. PlayStation, a CD player. I had so a they were breaking into your house. Yeah. Not just things around in the, we kept getting robbed. In the yard. Wow. Yeah. And so. Um, my mom was like, we need to leave yeah. something more, you know, and my mom had friends over here. We didn't have any family. So it was either Dallas, Fort Worth area mm -hmm. or Chicago because I have a tia in Chicago. I don't think Chicago is much safer. Right. right now. I know. Yeah. I'm like, thank you, mom, for coming to Arlington. Yeah. And so whenever, you know, I would be on the AB honor roll and get awards, my mom would be like, let's go to Six Flags, you know, to reward you. Yeah. So my mom would bring me to Six Flags and my mom was like, I think we can live here. And so my mom literally sold everything and we just had her car and our yeah. clothes and we came in so the you summer and your, your mom and your were your brothers you have siblings i was the only child for only 10 child. years wow. and then my parents got remarried and decided to have kids so i have little brothers and sisters wow yeah so why why did she want to reward you i mean of course it's great that you're doing great in mm -hmm. school right and a lot of maybe some of the latino parents are like it's your job to go to school and make good grades but it's extra to be able to see that you're doing good for yourself, A and B's, and then do a little something to reward you. Do you think that somewhat influenced you? It's like, if I keep doing stuff, I'm gonna get rewarded with stuff. Not enough, kind of like struck, or like maybe push you to do that, that way, but at the same time, it was kind of cool to be able to be rewarded for doing good things. Mm -hmm. It yeah, it would motivate anyway. me because it's like, oh, if I do good, my mom's going to take me to Six Flags again, you know? So I was yeah. like, I would do good. But I would iron, like my mom did good at teaching me how to take care of myself because mm. I would iron my own clothes when I was seven. I went to a Catholic school, oh, wow. so I would iron my own uniforms at seven, um, get everything ready, you yeah. know, wake myself up, 
I was really re weirdly responsible at so young, you know? Why, why do you think she wanted to get you ready to know all these things at, the, at a young age? What do you feel like she was preparing you for, just to be a responsible adult? Or what else did she wanted you to, why did she want you to push you in that direction? I think she, know? yeah, I think she was pushing me to be more responsible in the, in the city that we were living in, you know, because mm -hmm. there was a lot of crime. I think she was just wanting me to learn how to take care of myself. In case anything happened, I would know and be aware. I would make my own noodles when I was six, you know. I don't know. About chan. <laughs> How did you make it? How did you make yours? Oh man, it was nasty. So yeah. you know the the square packets. Yeah. So I would um. I would put them in a bowl and put water in them, and then put them in the microwave for three minutes. What? You, you never do that? Yeah. No. yeah. The and little then, <laughs> cups that you're not supposed no, to. No, not the, the cups. The yeah, yeah, packet. The, the packet. square. Yeah. yeah. So I'd open it, put it in a bowl, fill it with water, and put, it in the put it in the microwave for three minutes. I think the instructions are on the bag, and then you take it out and put the saucy, yeah, <laughs> and you just mix it. Valentina y limón. No, I wouldn't put none no? of that. I didn't like that when I was little. Really? I was like six, seven. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We needed spices since I was. I don't even think they had cups. Do they have the cups back then? I don't then? think so. Either. That was like 2000, no. 1999. Was it? <laughs> yeah. So you know all about it because you remember transitioning to. I'm good at remembering dates. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the jobs you held so far because now you're a realtor. Yeah. Uh, how hard is it to be a realtor? Ooh. Like, Let me take a little drink real quick. Hold on. What are the challenges that you have to go as a woman realtor in the realtor business and as a Latina mm -hmm. in the realtor business in real, real estate? Okay. Give it to me straight too. No, no sugar cutting, no filter. How hard is it for you? You really, people don't really necessarily see how hard you have to push yourself to be able to do this because whether you be a woman yeah. or, or even the market itself, the people might not even understand. There's a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's really hard because people think it's easy. You just show a house and then you get, you sign and that's it. Right. But we're pretty much like professional negotiators, mm -hmm. you know? We're gonna represent you, we have to go, you don't see what goes behind the scenes, like we're making phone calls. I'm on the phone sometimes at midnight with lenders, trying to, you know, figure things out. Wow. Um, yeah, I work all the time. There's no, you know, I'm 24 seven, even on vacation right. in Mexico, I was working. So yeah. I work nonstop, yeah, I don't stop. Um, it's really hard because it's not that easy and we don't get paid until you get your keys. So I can be, you can be my customer for six months. I'm not gonna get paid that whole six months, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be showing you a lot of homes, you know? It's a lot of time, energy, gas. Um, sometimes it's time away from my kids, but I'm sacrificing all this to build it and to help my client. So it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience that right. people don't, don't really consider or don't think too much of mm -hmm. into it. Um, sometimes it's hard because I've had, Actually, I'll tell you a quick story. I had one particular client right. that um, didn't want to work with me because I was. It was when I first started, right when I was like freshly. Why, Why he tell you? Because I you? didn't have a lot of experience. Mm. So it was. It was a couple, and the spouse was like, "I don't want to work with her because she hasn't been in the real estate game you for a long it time." From him directly, or did the spouse? The spouse told me what the spouse. I can't say names, but no, that's fine. like the okay. Nobody. So a married couple. One of them told me my person doesn't want to work with you because you don't have a lot of experience. I was like, okay, you know, like I was like, okay, but I work hard and I can get it done. So they were working with the realtor for two years. Mm -hmm. This was in the 2020, um, whenever everybody, everybody was buying. Right. Right. And so they told me that and they were working with, with their personal realtor for two years and that realtor couldn't get them under contract. So they kept losing every offer. And so she was like, you know what? We're gonna give you a chance. Like, let's just do it. Yeah. And so we looked at so many houses and I was like, let's go. Like she picked me up and we went and I was on my laptop looking at houses. Okay, go here, go here, go here. Right? And we went and um, I got her under contract in one month. And so we, we two got years for them trying to find a home, we're not able to lock it in with a more experienced realtor. With a more experienced realtor. What do you think was the difference between you besides the fact mm -hmm course you're not experienced but something had made you different way different than the other experience realtor what was it um because I was just ready to work you know I was like let's go like what, what house you want to see let's go I wasn't like oh I have to see we'll see I was like okay you want to see it let's go 
the appointment set in an hour. Where are you at? Let's go. Yeah. And she was like, I love that. And I was like, I stay ready so I don't have to get ready. Like, we're ready. I always carry my laptop with me. And I'm like, let's go. Because you never know when you, you know, when you're going to need to make a move. And right. so, so I think that's what it was. I was so, just like, I work with urgency. And I'm like, let's get it done. Let's get it done. Whenever you were finally had a contract, and of course the husband had to be there, was there anything that you felt that he was like, you know what, even though you didn't have the experience, like, I, I appreciate the fact that you were just on, on point without the experience at that time did you get any sense to no he didn't he didn't tell me anything no i think he was probably embarrassed but he was just like you know what thank you. he was right like thank you so much right? he was super grateful you know mm. so he had, like expressed how grateful he was and all that and then i helped him get some more properties so after that you know so you were their no number one to go to now after that yeah particular situation mm -hmm. wow yeah i've helped him with multiple transactions after that so do you feel that that particular skill or that particular desire to be on point at the time to be ready separates you away from different realtors because there's so many of them yeah because i i you know i have to with my buyers or sellers i have to yeah. communicate with their their agents some of them they'll be like i don't work after six or call me on this day and we have to get a deal done and i'm like how you're an agent we have to get this done you want me to call you the next business day and so some some agents they they won't work on the weekends right they won't show on the weekends and so it just it's it doesn't make any sense. You know? It doesn't make any sense to you because to you me. know that buying a home is one of the biggest purchases they're going to do in their life. Yeah. And to be able to, it's great that you have flexible hours. It, it, you'll be better that like you'll be able to take time off when you want it to. But you know the responsibility that you have whenever they put that in your hands to find them a home, not a house, a home, because eventually mm -hmm. it's going to be a home for them. So you take pride on doing that. Yeah, and for sure. that's crazy that you're able to do that because you're right. Some people, after they're established, uh, don't call me after five, whatever the case might be, or not even the weekends. And a lot of the times, I find realtors that are successful during the weekends are the times that they're busy the most. And I'm pretty sure that's the, the way your weekend goes, right? Yeah, weekends are crazy. I have eight showings tomorrow. <laughs> you have eight showings tomorrow. Yeah, just tomorrow. Yep. Starting at what time? Starting at nine. All over the place. All over mm -hmm. the DFW. Fort Worth, Arlington, Louisville, Richardson, everywhere. So I'll be working tomorrow. All and you still have something today? Yeah. No? Maybe? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> always working, by the way. Always working. Okay. Always responding to emails. You have to, you know? Absolutely. So what were the odd jobs that you did before you found? Actually, how did you even begin to do a realtor? Where did you find that that's what you wanted to do? Okay, so... Okay, so I always loved MTV Cribs, right? That yeah. was my show when I was I little. That. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Nellie's, all them cribs. I loved it. And HGTV, just watching all that. But I got inspired and wanted to, to do Airbnb mm -hmm. and and look into like rentals, you know? Right. And then also, also flip houses. I was like, that would be interesting and cool. And I would just watch, like, I love Ryan Serhant, all mm -hmm. his YouTube videos. I was watching his YouTube videos when yeah. I was working full time. And he just inspired me as well. And I was like, okay. And then I went to church, uh, Calvary Church in Irving. Yeah, 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 of course. And there was real estate investors there. And I always follow, I followed them on Instagram and they were always posting flips. And I was like, I want to do this. Because all of my jobs have been sales jobs, but they don't feel like sales to me. So what were you I, doing right before that happened that you started seeing that? Were you in the sales in the sales business? Like, yeah, were you selling that I was time? insurance agent. Insurance so selling agent. life insurance, mm -hmm. commercial, auto and home. So and yeah. that was with an agency. That yeah. wasn't nothing that you were able to do and grow from it. That no. You felt at that time. That was just a full time job. Yeah. And when you saw those particular individuals, something triggered inside of you. To say, yeah. yeah. I was inspired by all the houses, how they would they were ugly and they made them look pretty. Like you know, I was like, oh, that yeah. looks so fun. And so I just reached out one day. I still have the message on Instagram, and I was like, hey, how do I get into real estate? You know, he's a he's a member of the church and an investor. DM's and I just back. DM'd. Yeah. What he, say? he damned back and he's like, I'm going to call you. And we had a conversation and he he gave me a link. He's like, go get your, li your license. Here's the link and call me when you're done. And okay. that's what I did. So that's the for you, your journey as a realtor. That's the first steps. They send you the link to go get your license. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to take your license? How difficult was it? Nine months. Oh, okay. Is that so, typical time for to get your license? Or is that because the test is kind of tough? No, I think it's, um, it just depends because it's self-paced, right? Mm -hmm. So they give you a year to complete it. 
so you have to take six classes and they're 30 hours each. So 180 hours, hours. Yeah, you have to learn the law of contracts, everything. So you do that and then you know you apply mm -hmm. for your, you apply with the state to get your license and then take your fingerprints and then go take your test. So it took- How, how much does it cost to get the test at that time when you took it? Cause it it was be $54, kind of cost, yeah. $54. I don't know how much it is now, but- And then your biometric, just, that's an additional cost too at that time. Too, yeah, right? your fingerprints. Um, background check, I mean, imagine too. Background check, okay. you had to pay, it was like 200 something to pay to apply. Oh wow. For my license with the state, yeah. I probably spent about 2000 close to $2,000 from my courses to getting on a broker. So you firmly believe on wanting to sell homes because it was something that you really saw and you were willing to invest that money to, to get there. Yeah. yeah. It took me nine months and, you know, being a single mom working full time, my kids were in sports, mm. soccer, gymnastics, basketball. So I would study when they would go to sleep and then I'd wake up early, sometimes at five in the morning to study. And I would fall asleep with my laptop open, books open. I would I have composition yeah, books yeah. of all the notes I would take drooling asleep and then i'd wake up like oh man you know Were but you, i was uh, wanted to study because there's a lot of chapters quizzes and tests and yeah. you can't go to the next one until you pass the first chapter yeah i would wake up and they were scribbling you don't even understand yeah. what you wrote i had pin all on my <laughs> arm yeah that's hilarious so finally how does it feel whenever you actually get to pass all the tests all the requirements you get your actual license and you get to message the gentleman like i got it so it's a four-hour test I wow. took my test in September of 2020 mm -hmm. on a Sunday, the Lord's Day. That's why I passed. Mm -hmm. So I uh, I took my test 8 a.m. In, in, down here in Dallas. Yeah. And um, it was four hours, but I finished like in three, three and a half. There's, a, there's math to it, too. You have a national and a state part. Yeah. And, man, um, the math part almost got me. I had to redo them like three times because they're very tricky. Mm -hmm. But I passed the first time both parts. And they give you your scores right when you walk out of the testing room. Right. You know, it's very, it's audio recorded. They record everything, visual, audio. They check your pants, your legs. You can't have anything, right? They check my glasses, like to make sure you don't cheat. Really? Yeah, it's like hardcore. Yeah. And so um, as soon as I passed, like I, I was like, oh my gosh, like the lady, the test administrator, I was like, I need to pray real quick. I'm so sorry. And in that lobby, uh -huh. I literally got on my knees. Yeah. And I was like, thank you, God, for letting me pass my test. And thank you for all the families' lives that I'm about to change and help. And she prayed with me. Like, she was holding my hands. And I couldn't believe it. Like, my heart literally stopped. And I went in the hallway because, you know, you have to, I think I was like on the fourth or fifth floor. Of course. I went in the hallway. I was like jumping, dancing, called my best friend. And then um, went to my, we went to go celebrate and ate and had some drinks. <laughs> was there any tears of joy? Yeah, I was yeah. so happy because I was scared because they're saying like, you know, not a lot of people pass on their first time. So I was going in there like, okay, I'm gonna try my best, but I know I might fail one of the parts. I don't know, yeah. you know, cause you never know. Honestly, when I did my insurance test, it took me six times to pass that. Really? I kept getting 68, 69. And I was like, what, what's going on? And so I was like, okay, how is this real estate test gonna go? But passing on the first time, I was like, oh my goodness, like I got it, you know? And I studied, I took a boot camp. It was $120 and they pretty much prep you for the exam. Wow. So I'm thankful for that investment. It's this is crazy journey as far as just even preparing yourself to try to, to get the license, to mm -hmm. test, hopefully you're ready. Yeah. So now that you get your license, do you DM them in and let them know you got it? Or you just begin to get into it and start yeah. seeing where can you go from there yeah because it was it was a partnership you mm -hmm. know so it was two guys together and so i i texted them i was like i passed and they're like you know what it's so crazy because we get a lot of dms of people wanting to be a realtor and we tell them to go study and they never do and they're like and you went and did it and did exactly what we told you to do you can so see it's why it's the though, team right? that i'm on but you can see why though right because it'll be a little bit discouraging of all the things you have to do to be able to get your license. It's not easy. It's not yeah, easy. it's a lot of hours, sacrificing, a lot of studying. You know, you have to understand and know. And some of it's not going to make sense. And some of it you don't even use <laughs> in the real world. Like typical school. That's always what it is. Like yeah. Typical school. You don't even use it, you yeah. know? But you have to learn it, know it, and then go take your test. So finally, now they talk to you, they're partners, and now you start working with them. Mm -hmm. How is it, oh, of course you told me about the first experience, but how is it that you start beginning to build what you, it started making sense to you, right? Because after a while, 
learning something new everything's like what's yeah, going on like where do i go what do i do exactly. what do i say yeah so were they good coaches to you to be able to guide you to like this is what you need to do they already yeah. guide you to get your license you got it done now what's the next the yeah next they're amazing mentors just marketing you know so when i did reach out to them they were like you can market for us be our marketing our network marketing director mm -hmm. and you know and, and get leads practice on getting leads so i was always posting for them um, I was always, we had like free home buyer, home buyer workshops. So I would do that. I would host, help them host, you know, we had free food, pizza, like all that fun yeah. stuff. So I was getting the experience while I was studying in that part, you know, and then, so after that, they were great mentors. They're still, I'm still on this. I'm still on their team. Yeah. Still yeah. Someone. yeah that's it's the, Casa Real Estate. Uh, mm -hmm. Awesome. And after that you start building. So they started building you little by little to be yeah. able to be on your own. So when did you feel more comfortable that you were able to start making deals on your own? How long did it take from the time you got your license to your feeling comfortable to be just flying what around? What was the next young? month? So I got licensed like in that? September and I had my first client in October. Just yeah. like that? Uh-huh. Which is the ones you told me about? Or was it somebody no, else? No, it was someone one? else. Yeah. It was a relative. So ah. that's the cool part. It was a relative, you know, and then um, got him in but October. you can help him though, right? Yeah. Before the license, before you got your license, you weren't able to help him, mm -hmm. but now you could. Yeah. you know exactly what, how, where to go about it, you know? They don't understand the realtor maybe they don't even trust them because us being latino we might not trust the stranger yeah but you have somebody that's related to them so like and the timing was perfect because he was like i'm gonna wait i need a house but i'm gonna wait till you get your license oh, wow you know and he told me that a little like two months before i got my license so it's like i'm getting my license i'm getting it you know i was just very confident even though i didn't know if i was gonna pass i was like i'm getting it just wait and so he did and then that we started looking at homes in october yeah. like end of october so how does it go when one starts looking for a house? So if I'm a, a client, if I want to go buy a home, mm -hmm. I look at a house, there's a bunch of numbers that people put on their houses. I just dial the number and get a hold of you. And then you just start telling me, I want to see the house and that's how it starts. So how does it go? Walk me if I was a client of yours and you want to show me a house that I, I kind of tell you what it is and then you go from there. So before you're pre-approved or you're just freshly reaching freshly, out? Freshly, you don't even know nothing about me. I'm just a random stranger from the okay, streets. Okay, so I'm gonna say, so I'm gonna say, okay, when are you free to talk? You know, mm -hmm. because I love talking better than texting. It takes too long. And then sometimes when you're texting something, it can come out wrong, you know, cause you don't know like mm -hmm. the tone of voice. So I love to talk to people. So I'm like, when can you talk? We'll go over, we'll go over everything. So I'll, we'll do like a questionnaire, right? I wanna know right. how much do you make? What do you do? How long have you been working? How much money do you have? Do you have a 401k, Roth IRA, um, any other savings? Do you, how much debt do you have, mm. right? What's your credit score? A lot of people, sometimes they don't know your, their credit score. Right. So we assess your situation. You know, I'll ask you a couple questions just because yeah. I need to know what we're, what we're working with and how I can help you. And that's building towards the pre-approval first. To yeah. See if maybe I'm able even to. Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm a young, <laughs> 20 something that hasn't really got it together, got a decent job, making decent money, but mm -hmm. haven't made the most financial decisions yet. So are you just completely gonna move on from me or are you, do you offer anything additional to be able to create a path for me to be able to get my things together that maybe in the future, three months, six months later, maybe I'll be able to revisit with you and possibly start beginning the journey of buying my first home. Yeah, we're gonna come up with a game plan mm -hmm. based off of your answers, right? So mm -hmm. if you tell me my credit's this, then I'm gonna connect you with the credit repair specialist or advise on, okay, maybe you need to pay this down. You know, I know they say pay your credit cards below 30%, right? Or try to get it at least between like zero to 4%, uh -huh. just as low as you can. As low as you can. Yeah, as low as you can. And so I'll just give you tips and advice on what to help, to help build your credit. It just depends what your, what your problem is, but I'm not gonna be like, oh, I can't help you, bye. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, okay, next. bye, next, like MTV, you know? Remember mm -hmm. that next TV next. show? Yeah, I love that show. Of course. So, but it's, I'm not just gonna go, you know, be like, bye, see you later. I'm gonna be like, okay, let's stick to a plan. But then it's your responsibility to actually be disciplined and stick to that plan. How often Some do people you don't. follow up with them to make sure that they're on the right path? Yeah. I mean, of course, right. you're giving the instructions. People are gonna be people, you're right, we're all young adults or older adults, you're supposed to know what you're doing, but. Some people might go the extra step and say like, hey, just checking on you, make sure everything's going good. Do you have any questions? Everything's been pretty clear. Did I leave you more confused than when we started? And yeah. Then, so that way you, you know that six months, three months, they're gonna be on point. Yeah, every two weeks. Every two weeks you do follow yeah, up. Yeah, right? every two weeks just to make sure. The fortune is in the follow up. 
Mm. Right. So just to make sure you're on track, because sometimes life gets in the way or you forget things happen, you know, and I get that. But sometimes you need that reminder. And sometimes it's like, oh, my God, thank you for reminding me. So you're the real till alarm. I forgot. Yeah. You're the real till alarm of mm-hmm. your your dreams. You know, everybody, not everybody, but there's a lot of people that dream of having a home. And that's cool. All right. So now let's say I repair my credit. OK. I'm good now. <laughs> yeah. Seems like I'm pre-qualified. I got everything that I need. What's the next step? So I'm going to connect you with my preferred lenders. I love my lenders because they'll answer my phone call at any time of the day, mm-hmm. you know, and you want to have somebody, a connection with or someone you have a relationship with already that will right. answer emails, phone calls, texts, whatever, because sometimes, you know, if you come with me with you're already pre-approved, that's great. But sometimes it's a 1-800 number and I can't call someone directly or they don't work on the weekends. Mm-hmm. And that's the toughest part where, you know, deals, contracts are getting executed on the weekends sometimes, right. Saturdays, Sundays. But um, is I'll a connect you. A bank, or who are they specifically? Yeah, they'll be. So I have one that's a bank, and then I have others that are brokers. Mm-hmm. So they work with different types of lenders. Gotcha. You know, they have options. Yeah. So their whole job is for them to get your information, to move it into their underwriter, to see and start analyzing your particular package or your for your home, and start seeing if everything that is required for you to be able to get the, the house is there. Yeah, and I'll connect you. Yeah, so once you're good with everything, I'm going to connect you with the lender. You know, we'll be on a three-way text or three-way call, whatever works best. You have to apply, so you fill out the application. They're nosy. They're going to be on your business. They're going to check your credit score, you know, everything like that, bank statements, most two recent pay stubs, whatever it is. Yeah. You upload all your documents, and then they check it. Run it through underwriting. How important is it to be upfront about your situation, about how your credit is, and things that you might feel like you don't necessarily have to tell you that is related to finances or loans to tell you up front. It's very important. Why? You have to tell us like on that first phone call that we have, right? Why? Because They're, the lender's <laughs> gonna find out. The lender's gonna be like, oh, he has $40,000 in student loan debt. Did you know that? And I'm like, well, no, he didn't say that, you know? And so we run into that issue where you have to wait or your DTI is too high. What is DTI? So things, debt to income ratio. And that is so pretty much depending. Debt to income will be your inf- your your money coming in and what's going out. Mm-hmm. Pretty much to determine there's a threshold that has to you have to meet to be able to be qualified to do debt to income. Hello, quickly jumping in to let you know. I know that you know you are enjoying the show, so go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And now, back to the episode. Because you can't be bringing in 2000 and 2000 is going out or even more yeah, than that's going out. Don't. So there has to be a threshold for you to be able to qualify to be a home mm-hmm. that's based on 2008. <laughs> that everybody was giving houses like candy. That's the reason why they do. So they check that to make sure that the DTI or debt to income is on point. So yeah. They will be able to see that you are able to afford your payments. Is that yeah. Because they're, they're not going to give you all this thousands of dollars if you have so much debt, you know, and then they're going to see how you manage your money. Yeah. So that's really big. So, yeah, your debt would be what? Your personal loans, installment loans, credit cards, auto loans, student loans. Yeah. So all that very, stuff that's on your credit. That stuff is on your credit. But be very <laughs> honest as far as what is it that you have, because, again, the lenders are going to find out if you have something pending somewhere. And it's very important also to hold on on purchases like cars or bikes until you finish the process of buying a new home. Why yes, is that important? Yes, don't buy anything because it's going to affect everything. <laughs> affect your DTI, you know, don't go buy a new. So I've had, I had a client that was pre-approved and, you know, they were already looking into buying hot tubs, jacuzzis. I'm like, no, don't buy anything, <laughs> right? They're like, I can put a hot tub in my, in my backyard. And I'm like, no, we're not going to buy anything. Um, you don't want to go use all your credit cards. You know, you don't want to go buy a new car because that's just going to affect your pre-approval and you're no longer going to be approved for the house so, because they're basing it off of your credit, then your income, your debt, you know, and so all that comes into play. And so if you mess with any of that, it's going to affect the whole loan. Okay. So what is another thing? So that's important to make sure that you maintain that. What other could be a deal breaker as far as you move it into your home? What other things have to be very cautious about? Make sure your follow up with what you're telling them to do yeah. to make sure that it happens. Um, if you lose your job, you know, like keep your job. Don't change jobs. Don't change change banks. Um, there's been people where they have all their down payment under the mattress, you know, or at home. 
you can't, they have to be able to trace all the money that you're Correct. using for your down payment. So you can't just go make huge deposits into your account, you know, as well, even either. then it has to be seasoned a certain amount of time if you do happen to have. So usually it's about two months, but usually yeah. a lot of the times they're going to be looking into where does this money come from? Yeah. And if it was under your mattress sitting because you don't trust the bank, <laughs> they're going to, they're not going to, they're not going to accept it. They're going to be like, no, where's this money coming from? You know, because there's a lot of fraud and stuff. Not I'm not sure what year, but they want to be able to to trace everything. Everything yeah. has to have a paper trail. But not only that, but it makes sense that they're fraud, mm -hmm. uh, money laundering, yeah. and all that stuff. It makes sense with them to ask questions about that because it's not necessarily you asking that or the lender. It's most likely it, the individual is going to be buying the home. Mm -hmm. And it's mostly government regulated, so that's the reason why it's not necessarily... A lot of the times the realtors or the lenders or whoever else gets blamed but it's not necessarily that. You are just following the rules yeah. of the things that are required for for you to get your home because of what happened in 2008 and other people not playing nice in the mortgage yeah. industry. Yeah, so they're more strict. They're more and strict. they're going to be all in your business. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to want to know everything. Yeah. So you got to be careful during that whole time. And finally, we get to sit down and we get to do the signing. Anything else that you do during that time to prepare for them to be moving into your home? Or are you just keeping an eye on making sure everything, like they call it, make sure there's no fires that you have to put out last minute right before they close? Yeah. Well, you go through the lending process. You get mm -hmm. pre-approved. That's your golden ticket to uh -huh. go see houses. Because a lot of realtors and myself are not going to go take you to see a house if you're not approved. Right? Because we're wasting time, gas, energy. Right. And you're going to fall in love with something that we don't even know if you can afford or get. Right? So you get your golden ticket. And then we have another meeting. And that's where I'm going to ask you what your wants and needs are, you know? Mm. And then I set you up on an MLS search. You're going to get all these emails of houses that fall in your criteria. And you're going to let me know which ones you like. And we're going to go look at all of them, all right. you know? So golden ticket, pre-approval. So again, to know that you are able to, based on the requirements of mm -hmm. the government, that they can see that you are able to afford a home. And then after that, you show them the homes. How many homes have you shown the most out of like let's say one of your buyers like are you like one or two houses in a you day get something or total in <sighs> in general in a, ooh, in a day i've showed 16 houses to one person yeah wow What's and so many? um it's a lot <laughs> it's a lot of gas a lot of it's travels a lot a lot, of a lot um what was the main issue with them picking a house they just loved so much you know and then they had a big family mm. And so, you know, I know we have to pinpoint, but I mean, I was like, let's go, let's go do it. It was, you know, whenever I first started and I was like, let's go. And so I was excited and it's always fun looking at houses because every house is different and every transaction is different. I really appreciate the transitions you'd be doing when you'd be doing the social media. I don't know if you do it yourself or whoever does it, but with the posts that you'd be doing, some of the videos you put in, the ones that you put on uh, IG. Oh. I've seen some of the ones that you transitioned to or just showing the home. Oh, the reels? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's me. That's you? I'm my cameraman. <laughs> I appreciate them so much. Yeah, You're, thank you. I like you. the way you transitioned them. I right need to now. hire someone, but that's me. You got Carlos over there. I'm there doing kidding. all the reels. I'll be there like, you know. <laughs> Getting the angles, yeah. making sure. Yeah, like good. my phone is full. Like my daughter was on my phone the other day. She's like, Mom, there's nothing but houses in here. You know, because of all the, the content that I'm getting. Yeah, and then I have to make the video and editing. It's a lot of work. It is it's a, a whole work. job. It is a lot of work. You know? Okay, so how does it feel when you finally get a, a client close and they finally are getting ready to move to the house? It's For you. the best feeling. It's Why? Like we did it. Because that's the end goal, right? Because you get your money. And you're going Your money, all, you can move on. I mean, you get paid. You know, I can pay my bills. <laughs> but kidding. you get you get through Okay, that's the end goal, right. and it can take a month to get there. I've had it where it t it's taken a month. It's uh -huh. taken six months. Wow. But you're on this journey. You have to go over some hurdles, or, you know, it can be easy, or it can be like this. Mm. But that's your end goal. So it's like, okay, we did it, and they're super excited. I've cried with my clients before. Really? You know, I give them closing gifts. They give, they give me closing gifts, so yeah. it's just sweet. When did and that start, the closing gifts? Has it always been a thing? Because I know I they started know. doing little baskets more recently than others. Maybe I because it's been I'm, a thing. Really? But I don't know what year it started. Mm. I know when I got in the game, it's people have been giving gifts. You know, awesome. I love giving custom gifts with their the names on it. And the picture with the key, the big the key. The picture with the key, you know, that's famous. <laughs> that's the signature picture. That's pretty um, cool. But it's fun. It's just like a feeling like we did it, you know, because yeah. we're... We, we're on the phone every day. So me and my clients text 
every day, phone calls every day. Right. Sometimes I'm talking to my clients at 10 p.m. You know, I've talked to one at 3 a.m. Why? So, because they had a question. <laughs> and did you, so and like, you were willing to wake up at that what's time? Up? Yeah. Wow. I was ready. Tell me a time that you and your client both cry and what, what happened without telling too much of their business. Why was it so emotional for them to be able to, once they closed, they, they had that relief that they had the desire to cry because for whatever reason, they felt very emotional at that time because it is a big decision. It's a big purchase. Yeah, so they were first-time home buyers, mm -hmm. right? And they bought cash. They bought cash. Cash, yeah. And they were from Mexico. So for them saying, you know, we're this old and we never owned a home, mm -hmm. we're tired, and and we cried out their closing. They were super happy. And they were. it was just special because being from Mexico, you know, be, coming from – from Mexico to America, and then them buying cash is a huge thing. You know, right. you don't get a lot of cash buyers, but that's a huge accomplishment, and they were super proud of themselves. I was proud of them, and they it was just a special, I can't even describe it. It was just a special moment because they didn't think it was possible, and they said they've dealt with a lot of realtors before, and mm -hmm. they could never get it done. What was the and main issue never, with them? They what didn't trust it? people. It was hard for them to trust people. It wasn't necessarily the realtor. It was mostly that they didn't have patience with them because they were just not really trustworthy. They didn't, like they didn't trust people. They didn't trust people, and I don't think they were getting explained the. I don't think they were getting explained the process correctly by the realtor, whoever they were talking to. Okay, so they're. I'm assuming they're Spanish speaking. Yeah, it could be the. It was all Spanish. Uh, okay, uh -huh. tell me the difference between dealing with a Spanish speaking person, uh, Latino or Mexicano, mm -hmm. in Spanish. Compared to an American person that you know might know a little bit about mortgage, what is the big difference, and what is the biggest challenge? And uh, even though it's great to help your people, mm -hmm. there's more challenges with that. For the same reason, the trustworthiness part. Trust is huge, you know, because okay. they oh. always think like tranzas or someone's trying to, you know, they don't think it's too good to be true. But it's okay. like, no, this is how it works. This is how it is. I break everything down for them, you know, from like start, this is yeah. what's gonna happen, your inspection, your earnest option money, utilities, like this is how it's gonna work. And I think because I take that time, it gives them more peace of mind and they're like, oh, okay. Okay. Like, we get it now, you know? And I, I since I have experience in the, in the in insurance industry, I'm able to tell them how the insurance works as well. And so they're super happy with that. Okay. With the insurance so, of home homeowners insurance. What about the what about the language barrier as far as having to explain everything in which the terminology is different? You have to use different words as far as trying to explain to them. Mm -hmm. and why is it that it's like that instead of just telling them that's just what it is? It's harder to explain the loans to them, mm -hmm. you know, like why conventional is like this or why FHA is like this because they don't understand that much. So I'll, we'll just have to go more deeper into it with them um, versus English speaking customers because they get it. They're like, oh, okay, boom, boom, boom. This is FHA, conventional bank statement loans. But with them, I'll just have to break it down more. So for the depth. most part, it takes a little longer to deal with them because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a little bit more explaining. Yeah. And having to be able to gain their trust to doing the process of explaining everything. Yeah. That's crazy. And they don't like sharing a lot of stuff, you know? <laughs> Sometimes Why? they're like, is that oh, a pues culture I, thing? Pues no sé. <laughs> I don't know. Is that a culture thing? It might be. Yeah. It might be. Like, como que? Like, 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 what, what had, they pues don't no like to share? Pues, Pos gano, pos gano, ochenta mil por ahí, no sé, no sé. Like, they're always like, no sé, no sé. I'm like, okay, pero cuánto hiciste ese en total? Like, exactly, you know? How much patience do you have to have? Not to be, like, rude or anything, but, again, it takes, you can't break their, you can't push them too hard because you don't worry about you being too pushy and something doesn't feel right. Maybe they're starting to lose their trust. But you really have to be super patient with them more mm -hmm. of explaining to them. The reason why is because... You, we need to have the documents, the paperwork to be able to. So you have to be even extra patient with them to be able to not push them away yeah. and keep them, make sure they engage to buy in their home. Yeah. So, so okay, so the one thing, though, is Spanish was my first language. Mm. So the language barrier, like, that's easy. Mm -hmm. You know, I got that down. I had to learn English when I was three. And so I went to a little school, a little preschool to <laughs> learn. And so that part's easy. But, yeah, it's, it's more... I explain to them like what all documents you're gonna need, right? Yeah. Cause sometimes they won't do their taxes or uh, sometimes a lot of Hispanos like have their own businesses, you know? Yeah. Or they're ITIN buyers and there's awesome programs for that too. Mm -hmm. But they won't have their, their taxes or anything. And so I just explain to them like line per line what all the documents we're gonna need. And then they're, and then they're good. 
they're good yeah so as long I'm as you give them a I've list to be patient with them and then they understand yeah and it's not like a it's, it's more i'm not trying to be like like man come on like they're always asking questions or no one trusts nobody but it's understandable because it's a new process for them to be able to yeah but i was trying to touch up on the patience because it does take because i have dealt with them too as far as having to talk to them and having to be very thorough and line by line explain to them and once you do that they'll be able to reciprocate whatever you need mm-hmm. whatever because you already know what they need it for it's not for me it's that's what they're asking yeah and this is what we need to make it happen yeah it's just more explanation yeah. you know and answering all the questions of that's course that's pretty cool and they're good yeah okay so it's tell just... me the story about your tia mm-hmm. at 10 years old somehow she got you engaged on doing your first deal that's yeah. kind of interesting and you know what so... i didn't realize until like probably four months ago yeah that it was a real estate deal and i didn't even know okay. i barely came across that so i was 10 years old you uh-huh. know i have family in kansas still so right. i was with my tia and my mom was over here in texas and i was just with her for the summer she just had a baby mm-hmm. and so she was like we need you know her lease was up at uh-huh. her rental house mm-hmm. and she's like we need to find somewhere else to live and so she's like Mija, will you help me look in this and this newspaper and I'm like, yeah, because <laughs> listings were in newspapers. Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah, back in the days. Yeah, and so I was flipping the, through the newspaper. Man, rent was like real cheap, four or five hundred, you know. And so I was looking <laughs> through them, and um, I circled like the ones I think she would like for her. And I'm like, yeah, look at this, look at this one. And so wow. she called because it have it would have the number, like the yeah. size of the home, bedrooms, bath, and price, and then the phone number. And so she called the number and uh, made the appointment and we went to go look at it it was a town home wow yeah and we we toured it and um and she got it she applied and got were you the interpreter for her she knew english no she knew english yeah but i just found it for her so the one that i was like i think you'll like this one that's the one she ended up moving into it's crazy that's crazy that you were able to do that i I would just order pizza when i was learning english and i thought i was accomplished (laughs) you got a whole house for your tia that was like levels okay but to me i was just helping you know like yeah. i didn't think of it of like yeah. oh this like i just i love to help and love i love help. building relationships yeah yeah why I is that why do you feel this important for to do that in regards to i mean it's important as a realtor right yeah. but in general in life why do you feel the relationships are important good relationships uh relationships are gonna make you grow more why do you feel this necessary for you i just feel like you can learn so much from people and then i just i love being genuine you know, in, in building that connection because you never know how far it can go. Yeah. Like, hey, you know, like all my clients, all the, the relationships I've built, I've gone to their baby showers, their carnasadas. Wow. We spend holidays together. Wow. Another client made a ceviche for me and I went to have dinner with them That's after, awesome. you know, like in months, their new home? months after. Yeah, in their new home. Nice. So it's fun. They they all turn to, into family, you know, because yeah. it doesn't end. With me, it doesn't end like, oh, here's your keys. Like, bye. Peace. Have a nice life. It's like, how's your house? How's this? You know, how's your baby? How's your granddaughter? Like, it's just, we stay in touch forever. That's like, crazy. We're, because we're talking every day, you know? So we build that relationship. Sometimes but it's at just, three in the morning. <laughs> sometimes at three in the morning, and it's fine, but it's just building that. I love building relationships because you never know when that person's going to need you. Yeah. And, you know, it's just them like earning your trust. Yeah. And so I get a lot of referrals because of that. One of the parts that stood out for me is the part that you like to educate people, um, all kinds of people. However, why do you like that part? Because, again, it's all kinds of overwhelming stuff with buying a home, more questions than answers, Mm -hmm. people telling you all kinds of stuff about either bad experiences or good experiences or things that are are not real. Um, Why is it important for you to educate people in regards to, as you're going through the process, telling them that or just educating them in general about either home or whatever it is that you like yeah. to educate them about just so they know so they can learn from my experiences mm-hmm. and then because i wish somebody would have told me you know or taught yeah. me so it's like hey i have the knowledge let me tell you so you know yeah i love that and it's free sometimes <laughs> sometimes but you but do yeah. have a book that changed your life so i'm guessing this is part of the reasons why you also like educating what was the mm-hmm. book that changed your life and why Ooh, I love uh, The Four Agreements. The Four Agreements. Have you read that? I have that book sitting somewhere. Oh, I bought no. it not that long ago. I still have not <laughs> read the book. I am going to read The Four Agreements and another financial book that I was given okay. on thoroughly. But I've heard about it. Mm-hmm. Why? It's two. So it's The Four Agreements and then Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah. That you one's know? very classic. I Yeah, that one's like a, a super famous one. And I'll tell you yeah. the, the crazy story about that one. But 
the rich dad poor dad because or no the four agreements because it has a a law in there of like don't take anything personal and that's so true you're the second person that, that tells me that you know that yeah and the, guests the four that I agreements had yeah told me the same thing about i that love part. that one you know because sometimes people are going to tell you things like the one where oh we don't want to work with her because she's not experienced I took it personal, but you know, before I read the book, I didn't know. But after that, it's like, okay, don't take anything personal because sometimes what people tell you is not, it's based off them, like what they're going through and you know, like their perspective. It's not you necessarily. And imagine if we do, maybe you understand it, but you still didn't give up on them, even mm-hmm. if even though they were working with somebody else. So if you were to take it personal of like, I don't want nothing to do with them. They didn't want to buy it because I was, oh, that's fine. But you came back around, stuck around, kept going because you know it was about business. It wasn't necessarily personal. Yeah. And you still got them close. I kept I kept bugging them, you know, and sending them homes like that I think they would like. And then they kept seeing my closings, you know. So like it might have been a little fire for you, not in a personal manner as far as like, I, I'm not going to do any business with you, but mm-hmm. a little fire for you. Like, I'm going to show you I'm that gonna I can do I'm going to show you this. that I can do it. Yeah. And you did it. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, and yeah. then what about the... Uh, Poor, rich dad poor dad story what happened with that one the rich dad poor dad i read when i was so broke really? right like a one bedroom apartment my rent was 560 <laughs> the good rental days um i was working at lisa's chicken making like nine dollars an hour and i couldn't afford christmas for my son ouch and i was like i can't even buy him anything you know i had mm. to go to mission arlington where they had um, like a Christmas toy drive, and you yeah. can go get kit. Cri- you can go get toys for your kids if you couldn't afford to buy toys for your kids. Wow. Yeah, I went. I did that, and at the very end, they gave a gift for the parent or mom or dad. You know, and they're like, "Here, t- you get to pick a gift." And my gift was that book. Like I picked that book, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Oh. Wow. Yeah, I was like, "This is meant to be." Like I need to learn more. You know, because yeah. I never want to not be able to afford Christmas for my son. You know, I was a teen mom, so I had my son when I was 17. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So within those changes and that, those events, it made you realize that something had to change. Mm-hmm. So did you make a drastic change at that time or you just knew in the back of your mind, you just have, you have more to give. You have more to be able to provide to your kids so you don't miss out on or having to go to, it's nice that they have those particular services, mm-hmm. but it's even better whenever you're able to provide something for your kids. Was it a drastic overnight or did it take gradually? But at the end of the, of the day, you still had it in your mind. I can do better. I can yeah, do I knew I could do better for sure. Especially being pregnant and mm-hmm. a teen, you know, and I was kicked out. So I was like leaving out of trash bags and stuff at my, friend, at my best friend's house. Yeah. Wow. When I was a junior in high school, still working full time and then going to school and being pregnant. And, you know, a lot of people didn't think I would graduate. And I graduated working full time, went to college. I dropped out of college, though. <laughs> I, I don't have no too. college debt over here. I dropped too. I ain't got no college debt either. You ain't gonna cheers, find that in my no credit. college debt. A hey. nothing wrong with college, but, but I'm just saying, y'all, y'all go to want. college if you want to. If it's for you, it's not for everybody it's else. Not required. It, doesn't, it doesn't stop you from doing whatever you need to, and you know, getting your license as a realtor. So. Yeah, you don't need to go to college. You just okay. need 180 hours. So how did you get into? We we didn't show on time, but I really want to touch up on the part about the Airbnb. So mm-hmm. you're a p- super host. I know that while watching the gentleman, Air- Airbnb was in the back of your mind to try to get into it. But how did you decide to go in and be one of, an individual that hosts an Airbnb? Or I don't know what the title would be. I know you're yeah, a super Air- host. Yeah, Airbnb super host. Uh-huh. Yeah. Nice. Um, so it was on my list, right? I love to make dream boards every year. So mm. I was like, I want to be, you know, I want to start Airbnb. I want to start. I didn't know where to start or what, but I watched YouTube videos. All the time. Right? Watch YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. And like, there's so many resources out here now where you can learn so much from, right? So there's no excuses to not know how to do something. But I would um, research and then, you know, I have a business partner. So we found the home and sublease. So it's called subleasing it, mm-hmm. right? And so, so we don't own the home, but we sublease it. And we just furnished the whole thing, you know, bought everything from Amazon, um, got tips. Like I know they like everything white because it's yeah. clean. Mirrors have to be in every room. So I got like all the main tips of other Airbnb super hosts and yeah. YouTube. And so I just followed that, ordered everything on Amazon, mm-hmm. spent a lot of money furnishing it. And um, the beds are uh, actually green tea foam memory mattresses. <laughs> They're wow. super comfortable. Yeah. But, and that's an important part in Airbnb. The beds have to be comfortable. 
And so um, got professional photography pictures done with it. You know, like the guy who does my pictures for my listings, mm -hmm. he went and did pictures for the Airbnb and um, we posted it. I created an account, um, you know, got everything legal, LLC, you gotta get your legal paperwork yeah, done. Um, business bank account, all that good stuff. Yeah. And then um, posted it, this was last July. What's the name of it? Of what? For the Airbnb business or is it just under your name? Was it something different? Of the LLC? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's called Con Luna Getaways. ¿Cómo? Con Luna, Con Luna Getaways. Getaways. Oh, LLC. Wow. Yeah, nice. Con Luna Getaways. So um, as soon as I posted it, like it goes live, right? It tells you, oh, your, your listing is live on Airbnb. Nine minutes later, we got our first booking. Are you serious? Just and like I was that. scared because I didn't have toilet paper or paper towels because I was like, oh, I'll do it this weekend, right? I didn't mm -hmm. think somebody would book so fast. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, can we check in now? I'm like, no, give me give me uh, two hours. Like you could check in at this yeah, time, yeah. right? And I ran in, in to Kroger and bought um, toilet paper and, and paper towels. And wow. then I was like, okay, you can check in, here's the code. How do you feel to finally get the first book in? It was fun, it was exciting. Yeah. Cause you don't know, you don't have somebody telling you like, hey, do this. They just have chat or support or email, you know? Mm -hmm. So you can't literally like speed dial somebody real quick and be like, <laughs> hey, what do I do for this? It's, it's a process and so, but I was excited. And then I love to say like, you never lose, you only win or learn, Yeah. right? It's a learning experience. I remember experience. you were sharing that not too long ago, one of your IG stories, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, you were talking about yeah. victories or learning. Yeah. So you only have one property that you Airbnb or do you have different ones? I have one for now. For now, mm -hmm. yeah. Are one you expanding or looking to grow here in the near future? I do, yeah. I do wanna get another one, I wanna grow that. Um, we have 4.9, five stars you know everybody loves it nice. um you know um i'll fill the refrigerator up with drinks like sprites cokes waters it just and then one airbnb guest they left me flowers and chocolates like they were really? super sweet yeah wow, it was like nice. in, around christmas they were super sweet so sometimes they'll gift things you know and mm -hmm. it's just it's all about customer service customer service is the number one thing and that's both on realtor and airbnb yeah How that's everything when, it, when you're dealing with oh it's it is 100% important, and that's yeah. where all my jobs have been. I've always dealt with customers, you know, and so yeah. I, my past jobs have helped me gain the experience to what I do now. What was so I'm thankful for that. What was a really, really bad customer service that it was bad at, but you learned from it to be able to be more, like be able to understand and hear the reason why they were frustrated and still be able to tell them the right things to not calm them down maybe or not lose them and be able to still gain them back and be a customer of yours. For anything? anything, anything. Oh man, I'm trying to think. I think it would be when I worked at um, Lisa's Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> because they wanted to fight sometimes. Really? You know? Yeah. That it was in Arlington. Good? Chicken's good and cheap. Oh yeah. But it wasn't done to their liking, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, they were cussing at me and stuff like that. And I was like 16, you know, that yeah. their chicken wasn't fresh and stuff like that. And so what I would, I was just always happy and bubbly, like, you know, like yeah. it takes a lot for someone to yeah. to burst my bubble, right? I'm just yeah. still gonna be me and still smile at the end of the day. So I was just smiling the whole time. Like, you know what, I'm gonna get you a new one. Like, it's gonna be okay. And I'll get you a free drink. And like, they were so happy after that. So you got them fresh chicken and you got them a drink and you gave them back. Yeah. Oh. Then wanted and they to were fight happy. you, and then they were happy. Yeah, That's and I'm like, cool. I'm 16. <laughs> 16. But, but you already, your mind started kind of sort of solving problems with people already, with customer service. Yeah, you know? How I can I make it right mm -hmm. with uh, now losing them and still satisfy their needs, and they're happy that they're going to come back yeah. and get more chicken? Yeah, and I didn't even know. You know, I was just like, you know what, let me make it better. Like, let me fix it, because there's always cool. a solution to a problem. Even though you have to dig a little bit deeper to find it, yeah. you can always fix a, a problem. Awesome. Well, we're running short on time, but I truly, really appreciate you. I know Already? We, I, know you have a, I know you have a bunch of more things that you do. And I, I know you per, had your first, very first event not that long ago and all kinds of different networking things, especially event, yeah. your networking event and also the different things that you've been getting into as far as even your posting in general. Um, I, you mentioned that you're interested in podcasts, and I have no doubt that if you've already put in your vision board, something's going to happen out of, out of it and create something for you. Yeah. I really like your mental... When I first saw you, when I met you, the mixer, uh, I don't know why. Networking event. Up, but Look at us. Something, something stood up. Um, you know, just like, and you're right, the bubbly thing and just walking around up. And I'm like, I wonder what she does. For whatever reason, we found ourselves in the same place. And yes, talking. And thank it's crazy you. that I knew when I saw you, 
once I follow the social media, it's like the same person. You know what I mean? Yeah. And people are it's not the same whenever you see them. Hey, people person. stunt on the gram. Just saying. People be stunting. Real quickly, before <laughs> I let you go, all your social media events for all your businesses, Realtor and Airbnb, where can they find you at? Yeah, so um, my Airbnb is in my bio on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, it's in Ulysses, Texas. And so my Instagram is I am Kristen Contreras. Uh, anybody can call me at 817-983-4555 at any time. Um, leave me a voicemail, send a text, you know. Yeah. My email is Kristen at Casa Real Estate LLC dot com. And Facebook, Kristen Contreras. Yeah. You send me all the info, I'll make sure I put it in the description. Make sure Yeah, have it I will. I'll send you all the links and to everything. Any projects, anything else that you have that you're working on besides the future podcast, hopefully? What the else? Future podcast, <laughs> helping more buyers and sellers. Um, you know, and then I also want to do get into flipping houses. Get into flipping so, houses. That's the last other part that you be started, cooking that up. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's a learning process. I told my younger twenty year old self, like I want to learn as much as I can. You know, just learn as much as you can. You can't go wrong with that. Yeah. And absolutely. go and experience things as well. That's crazy. Uh, shout outs, saludos. Any saludos that you have to anybody? Saludos. Um, yeah. Shout out to you. Thank shout out you. to you Appreciate for it. having Thank me, you. for your platform, for, you know, inviting me, having this to be able to discuss everything and all the lives you're changing and influencing. Um, shout out to me for believing in me. Of course. For working hard. Um, shout out to my kids, Isaiah and Aaliyah. I love you guys. They're my fire. They just light me up every single day. You know, it's a fire that's never ending. And I do it all for them to set them up. My great, great, great grandkids. So one yeah. day they can see, you know, how hard I've worked. Um, shout out to the Contreras family, the Viurquez family, my BFF over there the in the bestie. audience. We have an audience today. Valeria with We're Reflect Beauty Lounge. You know, microblading, permanent makeup. Future guest. We're going to be working Future on Future guest. Very soon. She's on next, so stay tuned. Um, shout out to the camera guy over here. Everybody Carlos. here today, Carlos. Um, and shout out to all of my clients, all my clients, because they, you know, they keep my business going. They refer people. They've given me a chance and they trusted right. me with one of the biggest investments of their life. That's scary. It is. It's a huge thing it you're is. doing in your life. But I think they put it in the right hands because of the time and the care that you take to be able to make it happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the patience and being available to be able to get and solve their, keep their mind at ease that everything's going the way it needs to be. Yeah. And then educating them that that's just the way that it's going to be to make sure that we get to the finish line. Yeah, breaking down the steps. Because that's you can true. tell when someone's genuine or when someone, they just want to sell something real quick to get paid. You know, I've gotten a lot of that feedback yeah. too. They're like, well, this person was really pushy with us and they just wanted to hurry up, there's hurry up, hurry up. something funny about that. Whenever people are like that, there's something wrong they just want to yeah. get get the deal done you know what i mean but you can feel that i'm big on energy you can feel that energy yeah. you know some energy is is contagious and you're like oh and you just get that good them good vibes from someone yeah okay so here's a deeper one uh mm -hmm. what is an important lesson that you learn of everything that you're doing would it be realtor uh, real estate or airbnb that you will tell your younger self that will help somebody out my younger self Mm. To, mm, let me see, this is a good one. I have a couple. To understand that there's going to be season, different seasons in life, right? right? Mm -hmm. You're going to struggle, you're going to be successful, you're going to be building. There's different seasons of life. Sometimes you're going to be struggling, but you're not always going to be there. You know what I mean? Right. To believe in yourself, because if you don't believe in yourself, then nobody will. Mm -hmm. And then also, like, to not don't let your why be your why not you know like my kids are my why right. but sometimes you'll hear people say i can't do this because of my kids i'll take my kids to showing sometimes like they'll go show houses with me i'm like hey kids let's go like they already know the drill right yeah and so they'll go with me so yeah don't let your why be your why not That's something That's big nice. i like that this one's even deeper Ooh. it's something that i like to say whenever i wake up throughout my day i'm not immortal i am mortal and i will mm -hmm. die one day these are not my words it's something that i heard before but i really like the words yeah For the same reason they makes me realize that i'm not here forever i'm not here forever but i do have to appreciate the time that i'm not i'm not going to be here mm -hmm. and help me hurry up and do things and keep me you know not standing still and continually moving forward with that i wish you a long prosperous life however when everything's said and done what do you 
want to people to feel and think about your life? I want them to feel and think that I I was a hard worker and truly cared and wanted the best for them. You know, like I love hyping people up, right. making them feel good about themselves. Someone who was always happy, laughing, just wanting good vibes all around. Someone who worked hard to leave, you know, a legacy behind. Just building, I want to set my whole family up, you know, and my friends, if I can set them up, set them up too make it all work together but someone who really cared who really loved to inspire people and motivate people you know i love to just like light that fire in fa family or friends yeah. and just hype them up all the time yeah That's i'm their cheerleader everybody's yeah. cheerleader so when someone's down they always call me you know and yeah. explain why and i'm always i love to to point out all the good things in people so they can realize how awesome they are you know yeah. just bringing that good you always need that positive that little sprinkle Someone who's going to help you remember who you are. And who do you go to for when you need that type of? So I go to someone over there <laughs> in the audience, you know, my mentor, my mentor, my grandma, yeah, my grandma. grandma. She's always praying for me. I love her. Yeah. Shout out to my uh, Ita. I call her Ita. Ita. I can call her for everything. And she's always going to like turn me back on like, hey, you're OK. Do this. Do yeah. this. You know? Yeah. I go to her a lot. So whenever, again, when I saw you and we found ourselves in that, uh, when we were talking, I'm mm -hmm. like, I, there's always, you think, always think people have stories, right? You always yeah. think people have something interesting to say, but a lot of times you might not realize what it is or whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. But learning where you've been, how you had to go find a toy for your kid because you were not able to, you were struggling so much to be able to now be a realtor and do well for yourself and do the Airbnb and then just continue to be of service to people. That's, that's amazing, you know? And the fact that yeah. you had to go through the journey of how hard it is to get your license, but still maintain and were able to succeed. Mm -hmm. That's not easy. And it's amazing and inspiration. And I hope that somebody finds your story inspiration of the fact that it's doable. Even if you're pregnant, even with your kid, even if you're young, even if you're, it seems like you're at the bottom, there's still a way. Yeah. And, and I think that shaped the way that you are, that you're you know, the one that people go to to be able to get words of encouragement and help them see that, that there's good in the world still, that these are seasons sometimes. This is not always going to be like that. It's temporary. You just got to keep pushing You just got to have faith and Absolutely. work hard because you can, and you need to pray, but, you know, prayer, prayers are promises, but you also have to put in the hard work. And I had yeah. just, I just had faith. Like I was 16 and pregnant and didn't know what to do, crying every day, but I'm like, I think... I, I know I'll be okay, I know I'll be okay. You know, I would yeah. talk to my grandma and she would just install all kinds of, of things in me and give me like peace of mind that I was gonna be okay and pray with me. And so I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I don't even know how to be a mom, but I'm gonna do it and I'll be okay. Yeah. I just had that mentality, like I'm gonna be okay, I'm gonna figure it out Absolutely. at a young age. And, and I, I got that from my grandpa, wow. my abuelito. For real? Yeah, he was such a hard worker and he was just like, we're gonna make it work no matter what. Because yeah. when I was nine, I sold elotes with him, eight, when I was eight, eight and nine. We lived in a trailer park, and I would knock on everybody's door. Every Saturday morning, my Ita would make elotes. You sell elotes. And we would sell, sell elotes corn. on the cob, corn on the cob. Are you serious? Yeah, I wow. would knock at everybody's door and be like, ¿Quieren un elote por un dólar? And we sold them for a dollar. And we, You know what it did for you? you it, it helped you not be shy and be able to knock on doors to people to be able to present a product. Yeah. That later on, years later, you will still be able to send a message or call somebody and it's like nothing new to you because it's just natural you were doing it way before way yeah my grandpa Amazing. was installing that in in me and not knowing i was eight on the saturday morning yeah. walked to their house i could be you know playing outside or doing other stuff that eight-year-olds do but i yeah. chose to sell it like this absolutely and everything again that i mentioned to you without a doubt you are definitely our global latin factor for the fact that you keep pursuing your dreams and keep wanting to get more so Kristen, you are at Global Life Factor. Thank you very oh, much thank for being Oh, thank you so here. much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank this you. This was another episode of the Global Life Factor podcast. Remember, we are just like you. We are the spice in this melting pot. That it is the world. Till next time. Bye. 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 <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for checking out another episode of the Global Life Factor podcast. Remember to subscribe. Hit the bell. It means a lot to us. If you don't understand how much you are appreciated whenever you do that. It helps us so much, and we are quickly moving on different platforms of the Latino community so we can bring you a lot more important content about Latinos, and it's all thanks to you. Thank you very much.